Okay, it's unit four, finance, and we're just going to cover a few little uh, areas on this chapter. Now, for the exam in 2020, that is a high possibility. It hasn't been up in a long time. What factors will affect you when for applying for a loan? I'm going to use the four C's when we're answering the question. So you would look for a collateral. If someone is looking uh, for a loan, now I'm talking about long term here, do they have any collateral, any security that they could give you in case of default in the loan? So you're looking for a fixed asset, something like buildings or land. Capacity, you're looking at um, their ability to repay. Capacity is the ability to repay. You want to look at the profit and loss and make sure they're actually making a profit. Uh, you look at their character. Um, so for the character of if it was a household, you'd look, are they a person that's working? Are they good at saving? Now, if you're looking from the point of view of the business, you probably look at how long has the business been in existence? Um, what are the managers uh, like or the directors of the company like? The credit rating, you want to know what has, has their past record been like when they have had loans and they paid them back in time. Um, so again, it doesn't matter. Just be careful in the exam whether they're asking from a business or a household point, point of view here. So it's the four C's. It's collateral, it's your capacity, it's your character and your credit rating. Okay, this section here, the fact just choosing a source of finance. This is the five areas that I looked at when we were comparing short, medium and long term sources. So you'd look at the cost of whichever, if you have a choice between two, do they require security or collateral? What are the tax implications? Will they affect control of your business? So will they get a say in running of the business? And obviously the purpose of the loan. Uh, so the source, if the purpose is less than a year, short term, one to five years, medium term, and greater than five, you go with long term. Okay, the benefits of a cash flow forecast. Um, now again, when you watch this, whether it's asking you from a household or a business point of view. So, um, cash flow forecast is great for controlling. It helps you to control. So, you, a forecast is remember something for the future. So, you're predicting what you think will happen in your cash flow in the future. So, if you have a projection, you have a budget. So, you can actually keep an eye on it and see are you um, spending more or less than you expected. If you are, you might want to make some corrections to it. Um, if you were looking for a loan or a grant from the government, they would want to see your cash flow forecast. They want to see where you see, uh, you see yourself in the future. It will highlight a surplus. Again, if there's months that you're going to have a large surplus, the money shouldn't be sitting there idle. It should be invested somewhere to earn you some interest. It will highlight maybe months where you have a deficit. Now, it's a budget or it's cash flow forecast. So if it's highlighting maybe one or two months where you'd have a deficit, you should only be looking at the short-term sources of finance. And it ensures that you live within your means. It doesn't matter if you use that for a household. We use that a lot in junior search, ensuring that you live within your means, but also business needs to live within their means. Now, what they love asking, if they give you a cash flow forecast to analyse or to complete some of it, which is due up in 2020, they might ask you, usually there will be a deficit, and they'll ask you to make recommendations on how to deal with the deficit. Now, if you look at your cash flow forecast is made up of receipts and payments. So if the question asks you how to deal with a deficit, you have to mention a receipt, how to change that, and you have to mention a payment. Now you might need three points, so it doesn't matter where the third point comes from, but you must mention a receipt and you must mention a payment. So in your receipts, if you have a deficit, you want your receipts, you want to improve your receipts. Most businesses get their money from sales. So um, you want, might offer incentives to increase your sales. Uh, you look for prompt payment. If you're selling a lot of credit because your, your competitors are, so you've no choice but to sell in credit to keep your market share, uh, you need to get that money in quick. So maybe it gives them something for prompt payment. Uh, maybe you have investments uh, that maybe you would be better get that money now and use it in your business rather than running a deficit. On your payment side, have a look at cash flow forecast. More likely than not in the exam, in one of the months, you'll have bought a fixed asset. You'll have bought buildings or equipment or something like that, and you might have paid out a huge sum of money. You should say there, maybe you should lease the asset till you build up funds to buy the asset straight, or maybe spread the payment of the asset over a number of months. And uh, reduce your dividends. Give your shareholders less of a return. 
and then you could pick any one of your expenses say you might have wages you might have advertising you've rent just say maybe do you get a better deal on them just be careful if you pick one of your expenses say i pick rent get a better deal on, on the renting of the premises then don't pick wages don't pick advertising you've already mentioned that one expense you're not going to get marks for mentioning three of them because you've all these different areas to talk about in your cash flow forecast.